Well, hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Jesus was a mushroom, Roberts. Yes. You are dealing with a, a secret cult, a secret society. Welcome to Waning Interest. Here we go. Waning Interest Podcast, hour number six, the Wednesday hour. I'm Wayne Roberts. That was Joe Cruz. You can find the link to Joe's site, cruzvo.com. Right there in the description. Email Wayne Roberts. Wayne Roberts. Man. I believe. I can't believe I say I was in radio. Or that I'm a voice guy. I I I I'm losing my abilities. Did you ever have any? What a dick. Waning interest podcast at gmail.com. Waning with a Y. But you already knew that. Hit the Patreon page, patreon.com slash waning interest. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're taking over. In about 15 years. Some ships take longer to build than others. And I'm naming this ship. Should it be the whip? Kind of should be, right? Or Excalibur. It's a little cooler. Ah, wait. Who? Hey. Excalibur's whip. Huh? Huh? Such a dick. I just got one question for all of you. One question. It is, what, it's the date today. It is April 24th, 2019. Uh, so if you're listening to this within the, you know, week of the recording or not too long after, if you're listening to this. If you're not, it might sound hacky if you're listening to this, like, you know, a couple years from now. But I, I have a serious question. And that's one reason why I give out the email. Maybe I'll get an answer. There is the Twitter as well. Wayne Roberts 811. Question is... Is the big woman still here? That was so funny. And even though it was even though it was expected, hold on one second. I forgot to turn off the AC cuz I'm a big fat skinny douchebag. And now, uh, anyone who knows me, who gets tired of me talking to myself like that, uh, and is not around enough to understand, that's why. Give yourself a break, Wayne. I did, and look what just happened. But, it shouldn't happen again because I shut it off. We'll get some other crazy noise. And I'll try to pick up my... Um, I don't know. Pick up my spirits, which, I don't know. When I listen back, you know, because I, I listen back to them uh, once before I put them out uh, so I can find little spots to, uh, that I might want to edit 
or if you have noticed to uh, throw in a little fix, which I don't even bother setting up everything else. I just do it real quick into the computer. Where, like if I said something and I meant something else, I'll just pop it in real quick. If you've noticed, like this, giving you a little peek behind the curtain. But when I listen back, at times I can see where I might hell this is it's a great this is a great nighttime podcast with the way I project isn't it this is it's almost my uh presence or whatever it is it's definitely for the night time and it's almost as relaxing as uh, a, a yoga video you might be listening to. Or a meditation app or video or CD or meditation class. I do have that calming effect, don't I? Could be just boredom. Asshole. So, uh, uh, a few moments before I decided to uh, hit record, I'm going through Twitter, and uh, <laughs> my daughter tweets, um, she retweets a video of, I'm scrolling as I talk. Did she delete it? No. Oh, there it is. She retweeted this video from someone named Jordan. Uh, Jordan with two N's, just on the Twitter and it's a bunch of videos it's a thread of videos of this woman with a, 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 a I guess it's a blouse that's just got um, the fallopian tubes and or is it that way yeah and, and the vagi vagina all over her, the inside the, the ins innards the cervix and everything I, just, I don't know what the fuck I'm just so, like, what is she wearing? What, that's crazy. And it's kind of cool. I'm not bashing it. But anyway, this woman has little, has these, like, little, these, well, not little, they're big uh, examples, like a, um, like a doll, but of the vagina, and where you can reach, reach in, and, and then all, she's, it's, it's like the, it's, the thread is, uh, like, stuff that sex education in school failed to teach us. The vulva. But my daughter retweets a couple of them. <laughs> and I had to laugh. Because she wrote, See, I needed to know that you are 11% likely to orgasm from a man, but over 90% from a woman, no matter... All my girls switching. No wonder all my girls switching teams. With a hmm, boys ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whew! I wonder who raised that kid. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm funny. I'm just, that's just something this half would do. Of the people who uh, created her. I had to laugh because I used to say, man, I hope she's a lesbian so she doesn't have to deal with boys. Send it to myself and maybe a couple of people. Couple understood. Couple went, dude, what the fuck? And I went, 
you don't understand. Anyway, I had to share that hilarity. Um, God, my kid's funny. There's another one too, but I'll leave her alone. And I'm not gonna, I'm not giving out my kid's fucking Twitter. It's private anyway. Only for me. Um, the other tweet I wanted to talk about was Megan McCain tweet. She tweeted, uh, I normally, I uh, saw a couple of people uh, that I follow uh, either liked it or retweeted it. And then I saw a couple more after mine. But it has to do her tweet about uh, Bernie saying that uh, the Boston bomber should be able to vote even from prison or whatever the whole thing is. It's, it's, it's a distraction issue. There are things more important, and there are a lot of people that are in prison and jail who are in there that could be, as we notice from uh, the Innocence Project, a lot of people um, are innocent for many different reasons. And a lot of people are in there for cannabis, shouldn't be. So it breaks down. It's much more nuanced than just the Boston bomber, but whatever. I guess he got his vote, but voting's stupid anyway on that shit, except for local, like I've said. But either way, she voted. No one who thinks literal terrorists deserve the right to vote has any business leading our country. Full stop. I retweeted saying, no one from your warmonger family has any business having an opinion. Full fuck off. I got nothing because I got a small following on Twitter because I haven't really done anything with it and really going to be starting now. What did... Uh, oh, Sam Tripoli had a good one. Uh, he retweeted it saying... What about war criminals? That was good. Um, she is just disgusting and shouldn't be on television. She's pathetic in every way. It's, she's just gross. And it's all mainly I'm talking about in the head. I don't give a fuck about her weight or whatever. I don't give a shit. so gross and they don't really deserve an opinion and something like uh, because McCain's war was a war criminal and a warmonger yeah he was a POW as well but he was both he voted for the Iraq war among many other things that were illegal makes him a war criminal. Two wrongs don't make a right, right? And she has no business having an opinion anyway. She, it's, uh, I'm not even, I'm, I'm done. I just wanted to let you know about my fuck off tweet. Already sick of me? Me too. But we could have the lights, all of us, go out. Any moment. So you'll have this pile to remember me when the switch gets flicked. It's all. Because even if you don't like me now, you'll appreciate it when I'm gone, just like everything else gets more appreciated when it's gone. And that's when it'll start, because that's my fucking luck. It's how funny. I make a little joke about my luck as a plane goes over but it's it's you know we all have things that happen to us a lot um I've had a lot of oh you were right whether it's the next day or right then or a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years, a few
few more years. I'm like, that's okay, because I had already said the same thing to somebody else. Hey, sorry. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I actually looked for myself and realized I was just regurgitating what somebody else said. So, did myself a little bit of journalism, and apparently I went too far. Damn rabbits. I did have a rabbit as a pet when I was a kid. And another little kid poured stain, wood stain, all over it. Burned it up a little bit. Nursed it back to health. And it actually... Had it at one, had got it to where uh, it would not go anywhere. Like it was, oh, free to go, free to wander around a bit, and it would always come back to the cage. Blah blah. blah. That lasted, I don't know how long. A couple weeks, and then no more rabbit. Not sure if it went on an adventure and couldn't find its way back, or if. This is in the in Maine, in the rural areas in Maine, near the Royal River, like in Stand By Me. Which in the movie they made it Oregon, but it's actually supposed to be right there, Maine, where I grew up. Like I said, I grew up next to one of the mental institutions that Stephen King's mom worked at. So, And if you saw this place, at least the way it was, still fairly sick because it's old brick and everything. It's no longer a mental institution. Now it's a campus where they do a lot of nice things like weddings and other stuff. But back in the day, it was spooky. And it had that... Anyway. Not literally, but literally next to it, the house that uh, I grew up in has been rented to Pineland and still has Pineland patients that lived there since 80, no, I think like 91 or 92. They still rent the place from us. Did I say that on a different hour? About, that's where I used to go get my cigarettes because they had a 24-hour snack shack because there was you know, 24-hour 20, shifts there. And we'd ride our bikes there and, and, uh, it was a small town, so everybody knew everybody, so it was hard to go buy cigarettes some places. One place, we stole them. But I'm not saying that, which. I'm so old, it was back when, what were they, I think they were $1.25. And now, most of them are around 8 depending on what state you're in. They can't, I like the way that they're phasing out. You can really tell now. I'm a smoker. Somewhat. But you can really tell now as a someone who smokes here and there that uh, you can tell now as it's been phased out and so many people from places, bars and stuff and now just going around, it's real, It's much more noticeable to me. And that's a good thing. And I'm hope, I hope I'm still around when it gets down to nobody does that anymore, unless it's cannabis. That's not happening. All right, it's time for a Wednesday joke. I don't know where that... I apologize for the la that last couple of minutes. Couldn't have been all that uh, interesting. But yeah, that's the thing is sometimes when I get lost and I don't think I'm being interesting, when I listen back and I go, that's fairly interesting. That's the kind of shit that people always say that they kind of want to hear because, uh, you know, you it's what you want. That's what people want to know you. They want to get to know you. And that's what I'm doing. I'm getting you to know me. <laughs> Uh, 
see, I just do this so when I'm around the people that know I already say this stuff, I can just listen to them. I'm getting better at it. This is only the sixth hour. Give me a little bit of time. My friends are more appreciative. Anyway, Wednesday joke. I never have told a Trump joke, but on stage, but I have told a Trump story. Now, I think I first learned my neighbors have, uh, they have company. I wonder if it's pizza. Can't hear. Oh, well, I shouldn't eavesdrop. Well, you know, no, they're eavesdropping on me. So I first, I guess it was a what? Somewhere in the mid-80s, I guess, when we first even learned who the hell Donald Trump was. I've never liked him. He's a suit. I've never liked suits. I'm a blue-collar guy. That's why, see, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a blue-collar guy, but not a blue-collar guy. See, I've done a lot of blue-collar jobs. Uh, but I was best at entertaining rather than the job but I still have that sensibility. I like wearing boots. Only jeans, t-shirt, really simple, blue collar. Always hated Trump, always hated suits. Not all suits, but most. So, I get what year was this, it had to be 88, I think, 1988 in high school. And I, the school was two-story. I was downstairs. At the middle, there was three stairwells, one in the middle, one on each end. I was at the middle stairwell, and I had pulled open the, the door to the middle stairwell to head upstairs to my locker. And a couple of my friends were down at one end of the hall and hollered to me, and, see, I hung out with the smart kids, some smart kids. So we were probably hollering back, um, faggot and douchebag. It was 1988. We were 17, 16 for me. So we're babbling. I don't remember what. And I, as we were having that, com that long-distance conversation down the hallway, I had let go of the door. And then when we were done calling each other silly and, and, and goofball, I reached out for the door handle. But I was still looking down the hall at my friends and talking and when I my hand got to where it was going there wasn't a door handle there there was my French teacher who was pretty attractive and I accidentally grabbed her in the pussy They say that her fiancé was uh, being stationed somewhere else, and that's why she left a couple of months later. But I think it was very hard for her. 
to let me go. <laughs> well, anyway, that's a true story. Um, a fairly good one. That's all I've ever done with it. Never really turned it into jokey jokes, jock, jock, waka. I've just tried to keep it. Well, like you just heard it. And because I'm a um, Padawan nobody, not even a Jedi Padawan yet, I can do that and uh, throw those, sprinkle those in on Wednesdays like I'm going to. Because who the real, who's, who's going to fucking hear it? Besides people in other countries and everywhere else that's never going to see me on stage for a while. So it's almost like I'm doing a special on Wednesdays. It's like you build. That's what. A, that's it. I'm like, ah, it's the new kind of special. Somebody will like some creative fucker or 17 or more whips that I generate. Whips is fans of the Waning Interest podcast. Not only do animation or whatever, but also somebody will take all the Wednesdays, if, if, unless I do it first. Take all the Wednesdays and go bleep, 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 come up like, there's my, there's an album. Hey man, that's a great idea. It's a good thing nobody's listening yet. I just thought of it. Mark the tape, George. Thanks, Neil. April 23rd, 2019, bitches. Sorry, that maybe that's too much vanity. Did you hear about the Obama thank you, more Obama thank you money? How much money that dude's taken from financial institutions? Did I ever talk? I don't know, it just popped into my head and I just thought it was gross. Money, 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 this, money, that, money, this, money, that, money, this, money, that. Oh, what's all the corruption about? Oh, it's about money. <laughs> Why don't we get about rid of money? Then there's no point in corruption. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Because then it, does that mean that everybody would uh, have access to everything they need and uh, to the highest uh, uh, technology and, uh, and, and, and systems for food and waste and everything else that are very efficient and more circle-like for the efficiency and that are that are really so 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 much better for the environment and which would make it again so nobody would need to be corrupt because there would be no fucking point you mean that yes oh the ideas of the venus project the ideas of the Zeitgeist movement, which I'm a one of the early, I'm one of the first, I was one of the original members of in Los Angeles chapter, many chapters all over the world. I was in that first group of like twenty. Still, pimp them, the Zeitgeist movement, the Venus Project. If you look into both and you haven't already, there was a little head bumping, but which was really stupid, and it's about. Ownership that didn't need to be that was crazy. Um, like Roxanne saying that Peter was using their stuff for free or whatever. It's like, whoa, Peter, Peter's films, putting you in his films, gave you guys so much publicity, so much free publicity. You couldn't, you shouldn't be bitching about anything. It's not like he gave you, and he didn't give your ideas away. He just talked about the shit that you talk about to people that come to the fucking place. It's crazy, but either way, the ideas are right. And Jacques was a kill was a, was a was a kill crusher monster when it came comes to ideas and the world without money. Rip, Jacques Fresco. 
But that's the kind of stuff I think of when I hear again about, you know, the 21 trillion missing from the Pentagon over the last 20 years. Or Obama uh, taking, you know, $400,000 to for speeches to banks, Goldman Sachs, blah, 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 the list goes on. Look it up for yourself. Don't believe a word I say. It's fucking gross. It's fucking gross. He was no better than Trump. Trump sucks. He sucked. Because he was no better than Bush. Because he, let's see, Obama ran on getting out of Afghanistan and Iraq. And what happened when he left office? We were still in Iraq and Afghanistan, but we also blew the fuck out of Libya just because they didn't want to be on the petrodollar anymore and have their own money because Gaddafi was not the dictator that the crazy fuck that uh you were we've been taught we were taught actually did what he said he was going to do as their quote-unquote leader which was the libyan oil goes money goes back to the libyan people where it belongs the money they generate that they should generate which is why they had uh uh free health care free college long maternity leave no homeless hardly no poor um, the list goes on. It was beautiful until we bombed the fuck out of it. And Hillary Clinton, it's okay for her to laugh. You hate Trump. Me too. But it's okay. Now, if, if Trump laughed at uh, a dude getting a, you know, fucked in the ass with a knife, with a sword, and then chuckling, and he said, we got it, we came, we saw, we killed him. Ha 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 That's a psychopath. That's a psychopath. You say that, they'd want to put you in a fucking psych ward. Right? It's fucking gross. But they taught most of a bunch of us that it is okay because, yeah, he was a, he was the psychopath. No, you, they got it all, it's backwards. Remember, we're in the upside down world. Do you watch Stranger Things, people? It's so fucking gross. They're all banker whores. I've gone through this another hours, whatever. Just stop being duped. I know it's painful to admit. I had to do the same thing. I've gone it over it before. You guys, the, the guys, the people that are going crazy over Trump, they can't stand it, drive them crazy, and they, bat, they smash their... I have a neighbor that destroyed part of her apartment. I heard it the night of the election when Trump got elected. I could hear it all the way across the building. She was not happy. That was me Anytime George Bush did anything. And then being stupid not real and defending Clinton, not realizing, wait, what am I doing? It all stopped in 2007. 2006, 2007. They're all the same. Anybody who tells you they're all the same, listen to them for that. They not doesn't mean they're right on everything else, just like me. I'm not right about everything. Wait a minute. I kind of am. Now, anybody who takes that as vanity that when I make those kind of jokes, you're a douche. That's a total joke. I know a lot of people will. I know the Internet. I've been around the block and through a few doors. Probably too many fucking times. Let's not get icky. I don't like to debate or argue. I like to discuss. But that's very difficult. We've been taught to not. We've been taught to jump to other things and start attacking. And veer away from the information. I used to do it a lot. I don't do it that much anymore. I haven't done it in a long time. Because I'm paying attention now because it's driven me crazy. Because I thought I was being driven crazy. I thought I was crazy. And then I'm like, no, you're driving me crazy. And I'm like, no, I am crazy. And back and forth, back and forth. No, wait, no, I am paying attention. I'm the one that's done psychedelics. I'm the one that's more right. Whatever that means. 
This is all about chuckles, folks, with hopefully a little bit of, uh, I don't know, professorism. So many isms. I get them confused, man. I'm just tired of being a good dude and continually getting slapped and shit thrown in my face. So cut it out. I don't like the smell, man. The If you're taping it in the first flat, for that little quick bit of the video, yeah, that's funny, but come on. Come on. So sick. So, it, you know what else? I don't... Maybe I should look it up. It's not all the sudden. It's all of a sudden. I hate being a grammar Nazi, but fuck. I must never see it written. Here's the thing. This is why it's weird. This is, you know, the your, you, your, you know, everybody, a lot of those... People, I don't. Those don't bother me as much anymore because I've fucked it up myself a bunch of times. Because again, you do kind of forget because there's so many, and and I'm not that much of a Nazi. It's 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 not even grammar I'm talking about. It's just the saying, because nowhere in real books by fiction or you know real good stuff stuff that's actual literature you'd never see all the sudden it's always all of a sudden and that's what it's supposed to be these people that say it oh my god it's crept into fucking media and people people that are supposed to be news people that should know the fucking language or and because this is why it comes up, it popped into my head because I saw some uh, somewhere where the, the rare time that I actually saw somebody write it, actually write it and not just say it. And that's the weird thing. You hear, yeah, I don't see it written like that. Oh, and I read a lot. Almost never see it written that way. It's so rare, but I hear so many people say it. So that's why it's weird. Like, why do you say it that way when you never see it written that way unless you might write in your... <sighs> yeah, it's racist because it's almost all fucking white people. That's actually a fact. I don't mean to, you know, oh, don't do the stereotypes, but... Speaking of white people, homelessness... Homelessness that we're all getting sick of and we need to start doing something more for. And it's it, there's a lot that goes into it. There's, it's very nuanced. It's not just give them homes. There, there's there's drug problems. There's there, there's a lot of shit that needs they need help with. So if people aren't too so busy uh, having to worry about their money to pay their rent and blah blah blah, and then so they can help all these. We have more people to help all these people. So because it's over, it, it, there's so. It, the burden of the people that do actually try to help social workers, it's overburdened. It's, it, it's, we got to move on with this shit. Money is not going to solve it. Money, getting rid of money is what solves it. But with the money, got to have UBI and people, we got to make it a, a, a law that everyone gets a home because with our technology, we can make such a great little pod or whatever for you to, for anybody to live in that, and just, and especially ones, and even when people that need help, and it can be done. You just need to fucking do it. Did I bring this up? The Nike, I've been reminded that Australians pronounce it Nike. Just do it. So Game of Thrones, episode two, season eight, Bran main target of the night like uh, night king isn't he the one with the most open mind the big woman's still here <laughs> <coughs> i never expected nor did i ever want an arya stark sex scene we got an Arya Stark sex scene. I 
I never wanted to look away, look away more. Even to compare it with the the girl being burned in what season five. I'd rather look. I, I just, I'm 48 years old. Arya Stark's like my daughter. Know what I'm saying? So she's supposed to be with a girl. <laughs> hope, 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 hope. No, that's a joke. My daughter can do whatever. It's, uh, and I, I'm just here for you got the questions. Hopefully I got answers. Just a cushion. You know, how's this for a non sequitur? If you're someone who lives in Los Angeles like I do, you're probably aware of the amount of charity events that happen on a weekly basis in this city. I know about a bunch of them because that's part of the blue-collar work that I used to do, setting a lot of them up. Not always charity events. Mostly it was uh, premieres for movies. Red carpet, lights, all the other setups. Some hard work, man. And a lot of guys out there that are good at it, and girls. There's a few girls worked on some of those crews that I worked on. Someday I'll tell you the story of the Golden Globes party with the, I'll just say Golden Globes party and ladder. How's that for a little teaser? But the amount of money raised in a month, if you were to tally it up, the amount of money raised, so we also did a lot of parties and stuff that was charity related. Another, but different companies. Anyway, whatever. I'm going, I'm trying to keep this simple. I know. Okay, just want to make sure. But if you were to really tally up the amount of money raised in a month of charity events here in Los Angeles. The money, that number would have to, has to be, would be staggering in one month. And we all know that a lot of that money doesn't go where it's really supposed to go a lot of the time. So here we are again. Wouldn't need to raise money and waste time with well, you just party anyway. Wouldn't need to have this business of raising money for people that need help. Just fucking help them. Right? Just do it. Stop. It has to stop being about money. Wayne, you kind of sound like Jesus. Thank you. Thought you weren't religious. I am about getting rid of money. Who the fuck are you? Jacob. Sound just like me. Didn't even bother putting another voice on. What a douche, Jacob. But think about that. One month. Is in one night you can drive through certain areas. And that's what's going on, whether it's a, how, a party in a home or it's some public charity event. Man, this whole fucking thing is so gross. Meanwhile, just a couple of blocks away, there's all kinds of homeless people. And it's, obviously that it's obvious they need help. It's getting worse. It needs to stop. But I'm trying to keep this light. Hopefully it somehow... In some way, this will help make a difference. That's one of the other parts of the, of the podcast that I want to do this for. Is where if I can 
sustain myself on this podcast, patreon.com forward slash waning interest, waning with why. And all I want, I'd be happy with a thousand patrons, and that's it. That's going to take a while to get to, most likely. But I don't even need that to live on, but I'd be happy with that and no more. And that would give me time to do more hours if people actually, there actually were fans that actually do create whips. <laughs> Sounds so sexy. And then I can spend, that would give me more time to go and uh, help in these areas. Uh, Volunteer-wise. And, and tape video it a lot, a bunch, video uh, it. Not all of it, but, you know, chunks of it, fun little, put little, make little videos of it, and put it up on the Patreon. That's part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? Heath Ledger, the Joker. I watch it over and over, and I did. When I first got the DVD... It was one of those where, those DVDs where it would uh, only sit on the menu if you didn't push stop and take the DVD out of the player. It would just roll through, or maybe it was the setting on my DVD player, but none of, none of the other DVDs did it. It would only be, be on the menu for like five minutes, and then it would start playing the movie again. When I first bought that DVD, I found that I realized that after it just after it went through and I was doing something else, and I just left it on the menu while I was doing whatever I was doing, and then I noticed that five minutes later, boom. Uh, what? So, what I did was, I didn't turn it off for almost three days, two and a half days. I just let it roll. And hit mute when I didn't want to hear it. But I left it rolling and just did whatever on the computer. Two and a half days, I never hit stop. The Dark Knight DVD. So that qualifies me uh, as an expert on that movie. Especially on Heath's performance. You already know. But seriously, there is not one phoned-in moment. Either that, or he phoned the whole fucking thing in. And that's what we got. Why did I bring that up? I don't know. Oh, remember what the Joker said? It's not about the money. It's about sending a message. Not that what the Joker all he was doing was good, but he was right about a lot of shit, which is one of the reasons why he was such a compelling character, not just because of Heath's performance, but also the writing in that joke. That, that's why that character is so iconic. He has his reasons. Kind of like Thanos. But a little different. You want to know why they're different? Uh, one's green, one's purple. Color-wise, not that the Joker's all green, but his hair's green. That's enough. You got it. Whatever. Don't explain the joke, man. Fuck you, Jacob. Wow. I thought I only had four personalities. Now I got to deal with Jacob. I'm sorry I have to do this in front of you. But that's how these things go. Speaking of money, look at all that money that's going to be spent on another fuck show election instead of just fixing things like they need to be. Right? Right. Right? Yes. Some people would say, Wayne, you're telling people to throw a dollar at Tulsi Gabbard uh, just so she can get in, have 65,000 individual donors so she can be on the debate stage. Yeah, because I want her platform spoken at, in the debate stage and, see, and for more people to see how awesome she is. Pro expunging cannabis convictions, uh, anti corporate, anti war, even though she's a vet who still serves, hmm, medic, oh, the list goes on. There's nothing to not like about her. 
oh, Wayne, she supposedly didn't, like, uh, gaze at one. Yeah, she was taught that from a young age, and she broke out of that. It was like we all break out of stupid shit that our parents taught us that they didn't realize was stupid at the time because it was taught from to, by them. And, that's you know, it's breaking, you know, cycle. Is that it? Yeah, whatever. Another fuck show election, millions of dollars. What a fucking waste. Did I tell you Buddha Giga Wee is a corporate whore douchebag? Whatever. Oh wait, you see what are you don't like him because he's gay? No. Not at all. Anybody that knows me knows I don't give a shit about if you're gay or not. He is just a corporate tool distraction douchebag. That's a fact. Yeah, there's some things that you might agree with him on, but overall, he's a distraction to keep you away from listening to Tulsi, which is why they don't... Whatever. I don't want to... Stop it. Welcome to the Wednesday radio story of the Waiting Angels podcast. I should have some music for this. Maybe we'll produce something for it. I don't know. Who gives a fuck? So, in what was it, hour one, I think, where I told the story of how I got into radio... With my, because my dad, uh, listening to him talk about Howard Stern, listen, uh, as I was growing up and talking about the Grease Man, I had an interest in radio and thought about being a jock or whatever. And then when I was in Florida, I came across because I, I listened a little bit more intently and. Got to, know, got to like some other jocks and some stations and went, man, maybe. <clears throat> My dad would, Washington Redskins, the way he would say when they scored a touchdown. My dad would always do kind of shit with his voice, whether it was Richard Pryor or other weird shit. Mostly Richard Pryor. And then this one radio show, the Ron and Ron show that I hear, <clears throat> not expecting it. It was the premiere on the on that station. And I heard it as I was driving as a painter, and I was painting an 11 story parking garage for the Metro Rail. And I turned the whole crew on to this show, the Ron and Ron show. And then, what was that? It was 92, I think. And then 90, so 1996. <clears throat> I've been in radio a couple of years, cutting my teeth with Neil Rogers, Phil Hendry, Rick and Suds, and many others. We'll get to that in the future. But the weird thing that happened was Ron and Ron was the reason why my dad's like, I want you to go to school. I don't know what I'm going to go to school for. Well, you got this much time to tell me. There's a date. I still had nothing. I just want to be a bowler at the time, be a painter and a bowler. I want to go out on tour and be a, on, the, on the professional bowler's tour. We'll get to that some other time. So one day, just to shut him up on the time, on the, when, when the clock, uh, the clock, stopped the bell rang and I just went radio made a couple phone calls next thing I was in a school and nine months later had my first job and at that radio station a few couple years later some things went down we were getting sold And our morning show, Rick and Suds, was moving to the afternoons, and we were losing Phil Hendry. And I got called into the, pro the program director's office, and I thought I was getting fired. But he said to me, hey, um, so nobody knows this yet, so keep this quiet. Didn't even make me sign an NDA, because I was cool. <laughs> he says, um, our new morning show is going to be Ron and Ron. Right there, I poop my pants. And at some point, he says, they're going to be moving here from Tampa to Fort Lauderdale. And I go, wow, this is great. Well, here's, it gets better. They're looking for a new producer. And... I threw your name out, and they want to fly you over for a couple of days to uh, try out. Do you want to do that? And I said, well, seeing how I thought I was getting fired, no. Of 
course I was crying, and I said, yes. All right, I wasn't crying, but I was on the verge. Well, what the fuck is happening? I'm being, being flown? Oh, I'm actually being treated like a professional right now. What the fuck is happening? So, I hadn't flown. This is 1996. I hadn't flown since 1990 when I flew back from Australia. Because I swore off, swore off flying because there was so much turbulence on, on, on every flight. It was gross. Going there was fine. I slept the whole way. Couldn't sleep the, end the rest of the way. Not on the way home. So I hadn't flown in, year, in six years. Get to the airport. I'm going to have a couple of beers to calm down. And I got these big pints, two of them. I inhale them. Ready to go. Hour flight. Go out to the plane. Ooh, small plane. Shit. As I crouch down, because it's so small, and I look at the, there's two pilots, and I go, and I look, and I see, I look down as I step inside, I look down the, the way of all the seats, and I go, guys, where's the restroom? And they go, oh, there isn't one on here. It's a short flight. Uh, I don't think so. I just slammed two large beers. This is an hour flight. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Hi, I'm here to... I'm here to uh, try to get a, a dream job, and I've pissed my pants. I've pissed my pants. You know, come to think of it, Bennington would have loved that shit. Fezzy would have, too. So, at the time I was trying to write, uh, I was writing a treatment for a, a movie idea that I was going to give... No, that was something. That, I'm confused now. I was writing something. It was a treatment for something. Oh, it was for Phil Hendry. It was for Phil Hendry. And um, 30 minutes, and there's five other people on the, on the plane, five other passengers, and they're, what is it? Oh, is that, I can't remember how many seats. Was it 12? Was it 13? Was it? 23, I don't know, but luckily nobody was in the back row, back to the last two rows. And luckily all those, those five people fell asleep because about 30 minutes in, I'm like, there's no way. I'm fucked, I'm fucked, I'm fucked, I'm fucked. And I'm looking at the clock back when I used to wear a watch. This is 1996, you know, right around the time of Captain Marvel. So I go up to the front of the, the, the uh, cockpit and I go to the guys. Uh, I'm really not going to make it. So what can I do? And after they chuckled a bit, they said, dude, nobody's in the back. A couple of rows. Just take a couple of puke bags, double them up, go in the back there and just find a way and piss in the bag and just take it off the plane with you. And then I kissed both pilots on the forehead. and gave one of them a little tweak on his nipple. You get off the plane, say hello to the person who's doing the hiring with a bag of piss in my hand. And a little buzz still from the beer, because it was only an hour. Anyway, watch Redacted tonight, the Jimmy Dore Show, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, The Corbett Report... Look for yourself. I'm just here to be a fun, babbling lecturer. Remember, we are all one. No, we're all Neo, a.k.a. one, whatever. Sorry we ran long. Had the bump comedian Anthony Jeselnik. Thanks, Gary. I gotta go watch a documentary on the Knight Rider TV show. So, that's me. Stop looking at me, man.